Thank you so much for joining us for our Developing Future Victim Specialist Performance Measurement Training. I am Tina Dimashki. I will be your host for the day. I am a Training and Technical Assistance Specialist. I provide contractor support to OVC grantees across OVC programs and all things related to performance management and performance measurement of their OVC awards. Today's session, we will be uh, going over why performance measure reporting is important to OVC and what OVC does with the data that grantees are reporting um, in our systems. We then will be focusing on the Developing Future Victim Specialist reporting system use, the reports and the deadlines, and all reporting requirements that our grantees are responsible for. We then will shift over to focusing on the performance measures themselves and any updates for any grantees that have received DF DFVS um, uh, funds in the past. And then we'll conclude our session with a Q&A and providing contact information so you all know where to find us and how to reach out to us for assistance in the future. So let's speak briefly about why uh, performance measures and performance measure reporting is important to OVC. It is extremely important that our grantees focus on accuracy and timeliness of reporting on their performance measures and making sure that the data is as accurate as possible. This data is looked at very closely and we generate plenty of different resources and reports from the data that you all provide to us in our systems. Uh, providing performance measure reporting accurately and on time will help OVC demonstrate the value and the specific benefits of the different programs that OVC is responsible for and be able to showcase that information to Congress, to federal and state um, government agencies, to federal partners, to the victim services field at large, and uh, to the general public and any other stakeholders that are involved in specific programs. Uh, Reporting accurately and on time also helps our data analysts at the performance management team uh, be able to generate annual reports on the different programs and demonstrate the output of grant funding. We also are able to emphasize the progress made towards achievement of OVT strategic and program goals and be able to really reach any target audience of grantees, federal partners, and agencies. Um, and the general public. Here are a few examples of what we have been able to do with the data that's been reported by OVC grantees. Our team, our data analysts specifically, have been able to create uh, program data reports such as the ones that you see on the screen here. We've been able to develop uh, reports based on demographics, based on uh, victimization types, um, and crime types such as the topical snapshots based on um, different regions across the country. We've also been able to develop uh, different data collection tools based on feedback from our grantees who have been using the measures and the system to collect uh, data on OVC funding. The team that um, is really reviewing your data, I know a lot of individuals don't really know um, where the data goes once it makes it past their submission. Um, in their report, but here is the team. I am um, the training and technical assistance specialist, as I mentioned, but my team is consistent of or consists of data analysts um, and our help desk support, which is Harif, and our subject matter expert uh, that connects with the developers, uh, Liz Wayne, and we're all led by our task lead, Virginia Ward Proctor. We're all here to support you, whether it's today during the session or in general as you complete your uh, reporting requirements for your OVC award. What we can help you with is really just anything related to performance measures and performance management. Uh, please be sure to reach out to us. We would love to hear from you. We love hearing from all of our grantees. We schedule welcome sessions to performance management and reporting uh, for any new staff members or any new grantees that have not received federal funding in the past. Um, we also uh, schedule sessions to speak through the different performance measures and any data related items or any questions that you have around how your organization is reporting or collecting data. You can submit questions um, or you know, concerns or suggestions for technical assistance through the help desk, our PMT help desk, and we'll be sure to get back to you and schedule a session with you. Our sessions range from 30 minutes to an hour, sometimes even some follow-up sessions, and sometimes just a 10-minute question um, that is easily answered um, over 
over um, over the phone versus um, an email. We also have our resource uh, web page. It's on the OVC website. You will need to navigate to the performance measures um, page, and it's under the Transforming Victim Services Discretionary Grantee Performance Measures. That's where you will be able to find any DSVS um, resources for, for your specific program. And once the session is posted, it will be posted on that web page as well. Okay, so let's focus now on uh, the DFCS reporting system that you all will be using, the reports and the deadlines. Most of our grantees should be familiar with the Just Grants system. It's the grants management system that provides applicants and grantees with an end-to-end -end experience throughout key parts of the grant management life cycle. For our specific performance reporting purposes, this is the only system that our DFCS grantees will be reporting data um, into during reporting periods. Uh, you also will be submitting the progress reports directly into Just Grants. Uh, moving forward for your performance measure requirements. Uh, there's a lot of other uh, tasks and items that get completed in Just Grants, but for today's session, we're only focusing on the performance measures and completing reporting. The types of reports that you will be responsible for are, as you see on the screen, we have the quantitative performance measure report and we have the semi-annual narrative report. That first report, the quantitative performance measure report, focuses on standard performance measure data. Think of this as the numbers report where you're providing the data that you've collected about OVC-funded program activities that were completed over a six-month reporting period. Uh, the data is entered into Just Grants directly within the question sets under the performance report for that reporting period. The semi-annual narrative report, this is the report where you will be responding to narrative questions. Uh, it is considered to be a qualitative uh, report where you're sharing information with your grant manager about program goals, activities, and other factors that impact program delivery. These responses are open-ended. They're in essay form and can contain numbers based on the data that you've shared in the quantitative performance measure report. These uh, reports are completed in a Word document that is provided by the OVC grant manager to the grantees, and these reports, once completed, are attached to the Just Grants performance report before submission. I will be sharing more information on that process with you shortly. So reporting due dates, uh, our DFBS grantees are responsible for semi-annual reporting of OVC data. And the first period is from January to June 30. The submission period for that reporting period is July 1st to July 30. Our grantees have 30 days to report on their grant activity for that semi-annual period, and the deadline for reporting on that first period is July 30. The second reporting period is from July to December 30 with submission period being open in the system from January 1st to the 30th and the deadline being January 30. The data that will be due for those two different reporting periods is the quality or the quantitative data report, which are the, the question sets directly entered into the Just Grants system, and the narrative questions that are attached in that Word document. So how do you locate your progress report? In order to locate a progress report, you will need to you will need to navigate to the um, performance management section once you open up your funding up your award uh, funding award and the award information. Once you navigate to the performance management section, you can open any of the performance reports that are available by selecting on the report number. Um, and be able to enter the report and see the status of the report. The status of the report is also available on the right-hand um, column. As you see on the screen here, uh, there are some status, statuses such as completed, there's in review, and there's new. Um, any of those new reports would be the ones that you're required to complete. There's also a delinquent status if a report has not been completed and is now past the due date for completion. 
You also are able to see uh, whether a report is a regular semi-annual report or a final semi-annual report, and you're able to see the reporting period for which that report um, is required and when the due date of each report is. Once you select on a performance report, you will be you will enter that specific report and you'll be able to access the question sets. Uh, as you see on the screen here with the uh, circled link, that is a question set. And in order to begin completing them and entering data into the system, you will need to select that link inside the performance uh, report in order to be directed to the next page. Once you select the link, this is what the page will look like. You will be directed to the performance measures in order, in order to complete them. All the questions must be answered in order to be able to move forward to the next question set. We will be talking about the different question sets that our DFVS grantees are responsible for, but you see them at the top of the screenshot here. Uh, you will get an overview of the question set, and then you'll get the grant activities and the other question sets. Once you complete the questions on, the, on a page, you can select the continue button in order to move on to the next um, set of questions. And again, if you don't respond to the questions on a specific page, you cannot move forward to the next set of questions. There is an option to clear selection. If you've made uh, an error in selecting one of the options, you can clear your selection and start over as well. Within our question set, we have embedded into the system different um, validations. And those validations will, um, will be guided by your responses. Based on the response that you provide, the system will either show additional questions or hide additional questions from being shown to you based on that response that you provided in a prior question. As you see on the screen here for the training question set, it asks for um, feedback surveys that were distributed. If you were to select no feedback surveys were distributed, the system will hide any additional questions and you will be able to move forward to the next question set. However, if you were to select yes to feedback surveys having been distributed, the system will then show additional questions as you see in this page here, uh, where you will be required to answer an additional set of questions. That is the validation set. This is the functionality in the system that we call a show and hide function. If you have selected yes and, and you know that you're supposed to answer additional questions but the information is not available to you, then you'll need to troubleshoot why uh, that is happening. Uh, it could be, uh, you know, a system error or it could be something on your end with uh, the browser that you are using. You need to reach out to the help desk to receive additional support. Okay, so now let's move on to having completed a question set. You will hit the complete button and you'll be directed back to that main page for that performance report. And this is where you will submit your performance report. But because you have a requirement of attaching a narrative, you will need to do that before you submit your report. Um, it's a very simple process. You will go down under the question set that you had already located. There's a section for attachments. In that attachment section, you will select on attachments and you'll be able to open up um, a, a window where you will attach anything that you need to attach from your computer, that being that narrative uh, document, that Word document, and you will select attach. It will be then attached to your performance report, and then you can move forward and select the submit button. As you see on the screen here for this um, specific report, there are the question sets that are completed. There's an attachment, a Word document, and now you can select submit. Uh, please note that the system will not stop you from submitting your report if you don't have an attachment. Uh, that's not, uh, you know, a rule in the system. Uh, you just, you need to make sure you're attaching a document. If you don't do that, your grant manager will not approve your report. They will uh, change request it back to you to ensure that you're attaching that additional report to satisfy the reporting requirements for the narrative reporting piece. For any additional um, resources, we encourage you to explore the Just Grants resources. The Just Grants team is a different team than our performance management team. They handle the functionality of um, the platform and they've created multiple really, really helpful resources for you all. 
such as, you know, the resources on their training web page in general, or a reporting guide on how to complete reporting, how to access and complete the question sets, how to troubleshoot any errors that you're experiencing when it comes to question sets, um, and a guide on how to upload the additional documents that are a requirement for your program and submitting the report. I briefly showcased um, how to do all that information or provided information on how to do all these steps. However, I highly encourage you to review these resources once you start reporting um, on your award this coming January. Okay, so moving on to the performance measures themselves. We've talked a lot about the process, how to get it done, um, but let's focus now on the performance measures. Our Developing Future Victim Specialist grantees are responsible for the specific question sets that are shown on the screen here. You are responsible for answering questions regarding grant activity, training, collaborative partnerships, strategic planning, partnership shared measures, applicant measures, and that final semi-annual narrative question um, report. Grantees should only be focusing on entering data as it relates to OBC funded activities. You should not be reporting on the organization's activities as a whole, but only on items that took place or activity that took place with OBC funding spent. Uh, we are not looking for data as it applies to your entire organization. We're only focusing on the OVC funded work that has been completed. So any activity completed from other funding sources should not be included in the data that's correct, collected. Within the question set, you uh, will see two different types of questions. There are baseline questions and current reporting questions. Uh, some of the question sets include a baseline question, but not all of them. I will be highlighting that for you, but just so you know, it's the collaborative partnerships, the partnership shared measures, and the uh, applicant measures. Those are the three measures that include a question set or a baseline question. Uh, some of these question banks or these three question banks uh, that include the baseline question, they're asking to gather additional information about activity that occurred prior to the grant becoming operational, so prior to any funding being spent. Uh, baseline data for the performance metrics is established at the beginning of the data collection process, um, and it supports the, an assessment of the initiative. It really is to evaluate uh, what things looked like before uh, OVC funding and what things are looking like after OVC funding. Grantees should enter the same baseline data for each performance report. So for these baseline questions, uh, within the different question sets, your response across reporting periods should always remain the same. If you've answered, um, let's say, with the number four for a specific baseline question in the first reporting period, that number should always be carried over to the subsequent reporting periods. The system will not do that for you. This is something that grantees should um, ensure that they have recorded and enter into the system every single reporting period. Unfortunately, there is no functionality in the system to have responses carried over from uh, reporting period to reporting period. You'll have to enter that number again, but it needs to be the exact number that you've entered in the first reporting period because the baseline responses should not be changing because they are referring to grant or referring to activity that took place before the funding became operational and that number should not be changing. The other type of question is the current reporting questions. Those are the questions, uh, the quantitative and qualitative information or questions about grant activity that takes place during the reporting period that uh, you have open in the performance report in Just Grants. Let's move on to talking about the question sets themselves. The first question set is the grant activity question set. This is a very straightforward question set uh, with only two questions. The first question asks if this is the last reporting period during which the award will have data to report. This question should, your, the response to this question should always be a no unless you are in fact in the last reporting period. Uh, or if you're terminating your award early for any reason, whether, whether you've spent um, all the allowed funds um, or there's some um, change that took place within your award that you are terminating early. 
The second question asks if there was any grant activity during the reporting period. This question is very important. It's asking um, if there was any funding spent during the reporting period, any funding that was obligated, um, spent, or drawn down um, to implement objectives proposed by the OVC approved grant application. If you answer yes, it means that there is data that um, should be shared with OVC. And if you answer yes, that means that your grant should be operational or sh there should always be grant activity for every reporting period. However, if you answer no, this notifies the system that there should not be any data reported because there was no grant activity and there was no OVC funding used during that reporting period. And when you do so, the system will, uh, will you will not need to respond to the additional questions because you will not have any data to report on because again, you're only reporting on grant activity um, as it relates to OVC funding spent. So if you were to answer no to question two, you do not need to complete the rest of the question set. The second question set is the training question set. Um, this question set is to report on data for any training opportunities that were conducted by the grantee organization for interns under this program. The different data that you will be responsible for includes the number of hours of internal and external training delivered or completed by interns, the number of interns who attended or completed training, and information on credentials for training completion, and if you've delivered any feedback surveys, and if so, if they were distributed and collected, what the outcomes of those surveys are. The next question set is the collaborative partnership question set. Um, here, grantees should report information on partner organizations that are participating in the initiative as a result of grant funding. The wording here is extremely important. It needs to be as a result of grant funding. Uh, grantees are expected to provide information on any new groups, organizations, or agencies participating during that specific reporting period and the total number of groups, organizations, or agencies participating during the reporting period, uh, over reporting periods. So an example would be if um, in the second reporting period, uh, you had a new organization join uh, the initiative as part of grant funding, but you already had two other organizations in the prior reporting period that are now working with, the, um, with your organization on the initiative. Uh, your response to the new groups would be one, one new organization, and then the total number of groups participating should be three because you have two carrying over from the last reporting period and one new organization um, for, that was reported on in this specific reporting period. The next question set speaks to strategic planning. This is where grantees are to provide information on planning documents that were completed during the reporting period. On the screen here, you will see the different types of planning documents that are listed and then within the question bank. Uh, we have mission and vision statements, advisory board, uh, charter, community partnerships, MOUs, uh, internal needs or strengths assessment, community needs and strengths assessment, program logic models, action plans, evaluation plans, sustainability plans, data collection plans, and standard operating procedures. If there are any additional planning documents that are not listed in our options for this performance measure, you, are, uh, you have the ability to select other uh, within this category, and then you will be prompted to provide an additional description as to what that other item is. That is that doesn't fall under any of these listed options. The next question set is a, the partnership question set, and this question set includes a baseline question. Uh, the baseline question asks for the number of formalized collaborative or collaboration agreements developed prior to grant funding. Um, and then the question set itself for the current reporting asks for information on formalized collaboration agreements developed and letters of support received that were funded as part of the agreement. The difference between formalized agreements and um, letters of support is that formalized agreements are considered uh, agreements that are signed by heads of organizations with authority to commit resources such as time, dollars, staff, and facilities. 
Letters of support, on the other hand, uh, lend organizational support, but do not commit any resources. Guarantees are required to provide data on any formalized agreements developed, any letters of support secured, and um, the level of involvement of these partners that they are reporting on. For the level of involvement, it is actually in a table format, and you will select um, the level of involvement based on the options provided. The last uh, performance measure question set is the applicant measures. For the specific question sets, grantees are to report on information report information on application process and outcomes for the Developing Future Victim Specialist internships during that specific reporting period. There is a baseline question included in this question set as well. And again, baseline questions refer to uh, providing data on that specific question set in the prior reporting period when the funding was not operational or before the OVC funding program had begun. Uh, for the specific questions that you are to provide information or uh, data on the number of applications that were received by the organization or organization and those received from qualified applicants, the number of applicant interviews conducted and applicants number of applicants who accepted or were hired onto the organization. You're also providing information on the number of entrance or exit interviews conducted and surveys conducted and outcomes as well. The number of interns who started or completed an internship during that reporting period, the number of interns who indicated that they do plan to pursue a career in victim services, and the numbers of victims served at the host site and those that were served specifically by interns. Those are all the question sets uh, that you're providing quantitative data on. I do want to speak a little bit to the validation list and the different functionalities that are embedded into the system. As uh, previ mentioned previously, the system has a functionality that we call the show and hide function. That show and hide function operates based on these validation lists that we provide. Uh, you have access to them and you can review them, but basically a validation is a rule that's been entered into the system on the development side that will help the system uh, ask the right questions of the grantees. So if a grantee answers a question uh, with a specific response and there's a validation for that response, the system will then know if it should hide any additional questions or um, add any additional questions based on that prior response. So here's, I'm gonna give you two examples. The first one is in the grant activity question set. Um, as I mentioned before, if that grant activity question, uh, the grantee had responded saying there was no grant activity for that reporting period, that specific six month period, the system will then know that the subsequent questions are not required to be completed. And the system will allow the grantee to submit that report without completing the rest of the report. Whereas if you were to respond yes to grant activity, you are then required to respond to every single question within the question sets in order to be able to submit your, your report. Uh, another example would be under the applicant measures for question three for qualified applicants. If a grantee responded to the prior question, which is question two, uh, stating that there were no applications for that reporting period, then the system will know to, um, to hide that additional question or to make it not mandatory because if there were no applications for that specific reporting period, then question three is invalid, asking for how many qualified applicants um, there are. If there were no applications, that next response would be zero, just as the question before it. So really the easiest way to understand these validations, I'm gonna show you the rest of the list for different um, question sets such as training. The best way to understand the validations is to think of them as a set of rules um, uh, to, to better calculate the data. Uh, I like to think of them as one plus one equals two. Um, if we have the validation stating that one plus one should equal to two, and then in your response, in your data, you list that one plus one equals to three, the system will flag that. It will either you know, show a specific question or hide a specific question based on uh, the response provided. Now that we are done with the question sets um, and the quantitative reporting requirement, 
let's move on to the semi-annual narrative reports. Again, these reports are uh, to be completed in a Word document. This Word document will be provided to you all by your grant manager. Uh, with a set of questions within the Word document that you will be responding to. The information that you will share with OVC will be extremely helpful to your grant managers, uh, so please be as transparent and, and open as possible in your responses to these narrative questions. This will help your grant managers better understand uh, what is going on in your programs, but also better advocate for your program and for additional funding and be able to speak to the to OVC leadership about the program and the importance of this specific funding. Uh, information that you will be sharing with OVC will be around the status of um, active, the status of activities completed um, within the grant and any barriers to reaching each goal and objective. Uh, you'll be speaking about an overview of the program. You'll be speaking to performance measure analysis completed based on the data that you provided. You will share information about any publications as it relates to the program, any accomplishments and achievements, program changes, uh, other activities, any other activities that you'd like to share around the program, um, the program impact in your community and in your organization, and any attachments such as photos, news articles, and reference documents. Uh, I like to think of these semi-annual narrative uh, reports as a way to just really share the incredible work that your organization is doing and in a way brag about your organization and the level, level of effort that you're putting into this initiative. So definitely think about it from that perspective, share as much as possible so your grant managers really get an understanding of what is happening with this initiative um, at your organization and at the local level. And with that, um, we have come to the end of our content. Uh, I did want to make sure that I shared the contact information with, uh, with you all. Uh, there are two different help desks to reach out to. As I mentioned previously, we are the performance management team. We support the OVC PMT help desk. We're responsible for performance management and performance measures of your OVC reporting um, or your reporting requirements. Here's our contact information, but there's also a different help desk. Um, and that help desk is the Just Grants help desk. They are responsible for the reporting platform that you all will be uh, working in when you uh, complete reporting. Uh, they are there to help you navigate uh, the different functionalities of the system, to troubleshoot any errors, to identify roles, um, to uh, reset passwords, and troubleshoot any account issues in the system itself. Um, whereas we are responsible for the performance measures and the data collection side of the house. So here's both contact information so you know who to reach out to. If you do accidentally reach out to the wrong um, help desk, we will just direct you to our colleagues at the other help desk. Uh, so no worries about that at all. But with that, we have reached uh, the end of our session. We will be moving on to our Q&A session and we will be stopping recording at this time.